So we will start with trams. This is probably the first thing that they teach you if you want to learn trams. And if you are doing Melodic Techno, you will definitely see the similarities. So the first thing that I'm going to do is put the BPM 133 so it will be quite fast. So this type of bass has different layers. I like to start with this bit sub because it should be more or less kind of mono. And to do that, I just go to templates and pick mini mono. This is just a mini moog, but the mono version of it. And it just sounds like this. And just by using this patch, we are going to just put the notes first. I will put a simple chord progression really. And with a little bit of quantization and a little bit fixing, it looks like this. You can actually use four notes instead of three quarter notes here, uh, if you want to make it a bit more driving. But I feel like for trans, it feels a bit more if you use those triple quarters and leave the first one empty because we are gonna sidechain it heavily anyway. So we go back to Diva. It sounds like this, but it's too bright. So what I'm going to do, put this one down and put the cutoff down. At the moment we don't feel the envelope, so I'm gonna make the sustain drop like this and put a bit envelope on top. This envelope goes into the filter. Maybe a bit shorter. Nice and easy really, but we need to sidechain this. So let me quickly put a kick here so that we have a source to sidechain stuff. So I just picked this kick sample from my Mercury Tone sample pack and to get it sounds like this. It's a bit more like a transit kick, I will say. And the, the one thing that we will start with is just compression. We are gonna sidechain this diva to the kick. So all the way up, sidechain, kick. I receive a lot of question why I use all the ratio up infinity simply because it gives you the most dynamic range so if i want to go exaggerated or if i want to go very short like this so it's easier to control the range like this and then i'm going to put an eq this and we play together and fix the side chain Again, I only want to hear the sub because we will fix this one with the second and third layer and probably super lows, I don't need to hear them either. Cool. And on top of this, the main trance sounds comes from the, I will say the body of the bass sound. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to duplicate this. It's a simple trick that I know it works often time is like, if you copy this one, and then you open this up, but we are going to tune this one octave down like this. So it's actually deeper than it is. But then we go to the lead sounds rather than the uh, bass sounds. So the lead sounds oftentimes one octave above. So you are compensating it by doing this way. So I'm going to go for the, my premium uh, preset pack and then I'm going to go for the lead. And let's try some of the presets here. So what I'm looking for is this bright and spacey tune. So I think this one stickily it will be fine. Of course, we will again do the same thing. We're going to fix the envelope so that we have shorter envelopes. This is important. And I'm going to take off all the effects for now because I want to hear the origin sound. It is good, but the only thing here is this is still not as like a super soul. So I'm going to go for here, three, and let's put in the six. So basically we are stacking three different voices on top of each other. And then you can actually tune them up and down like this, each voices. So now it's brighter, but it is still mono. You can hear that everything is in the middle. There is a simple trick in Diva. It's a, it's a bit clutch trick. Not many people know it, but it's really, really cool. You go to the amplifier here, pan, and then there's a pan mode. And if you pick this stack index, which means that actually the index that we are using this, these three guys and we modify them right and left. And if you play this now, it uses the stack index to pan the voices on the sides. And it gives you this beautiful sound. And then which we can do, maybe give a bit more envelope. It starts immediately trying to see sound, right? 
but you can do if you want the to sound you can go for chorus I feel the clean sound is better uh, you can always use the effects but I would use the effects on the sand side instead so once you have done this the easiest thing to do is just you take this EQ here put it here and then we're gonna take this 8 we of course turn off the first one and then this guy the 8 one we're gonna switch around so you see what I'm doing and of course we're gonna use the side chain to kick and together Now, once you have this sound, there's a lot of room to play around. What I mean, for example, you can maybe utilize a plate reverb, maybe you can utilize some delays. Delays are very popular, I would say. So if we take something like this and put it into ping pong mode, so it's there on the side, and you can start sending and send it a bit there. And let's do the high end so that we are not sending super lows. And then we of course want to have the tail or the echo side change the kick as well. Together. Now we have the body, we have the kick. Uh, we have the low end, but there's always the fun part. Like what I like to do or what I hear oftentimes there's a plug on top of this. So what you can do, take exact the same sound and solo this guy and you go back here and then you pick something short, something more like a cut through the mix because now you are making trance. There will be a lot of air in the track, meaning that a lot of pet sounds, a lot of uh, voices, a lot of white noises. So there is a lot of swoosh going on. So getting some kind of transient layer on your bass is always a good idea. So I'm going to go for here, pick something plucky, and of course we're going to tune this down up, bump, bump, right? And I'm thinking like very plucky sound now. Maybe something like this, we can move up. Right, let's try with this origin sound or the body of the sound, see if they work together. Cool, the one thing that you can do actually, I'm using this DCO, but we can switch to, for example, triple here. It will give me the option to noise. And if I go for the pink, a bit darker sound. Maybe turn this off delay. So you have this really percussive noise on top of your origin sound and all together with the kick again. Again, there's a lot of things that do on your body. I would say you can even use one more a color uh, sound on top of that because if you listen to this again. There is a room to utilize something here or what I like to do is just go and experiment with different effects like flangers and phasers and so on and see if that adds something uh, for your sound. Right? That high layer right there makes it really cool. But these are, it comes to the, like the, the your choices, your taste in the tracks, and so on. Uh, it really depends on what I want to do now. Maybe we can put some heights and so on, and we can listen to it together with other elements so that we can hear that trance feeling. So let me do it quickly. The one thing that is important that I forget to mention before I add these things is actually taking care of really low end of your body. So here, what we are doing it like these are the same things that we've done. I'm using this EQ8, but in here, I'm using the MS 
mode. So mid and side version rather than stereo, it comes default stereo, which means that if I go to, for example, mid, I can do this cut, like cut lows like this, but then I can go to side and I can actually take the size a bit more, size to make it even more monocompatible. In Ozone, without the EQ, with EQ, It just focuses the sound a bit. You don't need to, you can do this whenever you feel like maybe low end is a bit too stereo, you are getting a bit too much sound. But the other thing that often done with the trans bass lines are they are not really static. So you see that I'm opening up with the cutoff filter here, closing down and opening up again. So you have to automate quite a bit during the track. So I added the, these other elements so that you can hear it in the context. It's always easier to understand what type of sound that we are look, looking for when you hear it really with the other elements. So let's take a look. It's really, really cool. Like I mentioned, if you are doing Meltuk Techno, this is more or less the origin of the driving bass sound for the Meltuk Techno. It was something used a lot in the trance and people just moved it and make it a bit more minimal, a bit darker, and it suddenly turned into a Meltuk Techno driving bass line. Quite interesting. So we will jump from trance to main room techno and the second will be the rumble low end of techno trance. make a good rumble track and if you are using the kick which we are going to do in this case it's better that you have a kick sample that has a quiet tail so that you can use that tail to make the rumble so this one sounds like this the easiest way to do this one just slap a reverb here and the sample and so on but i feel like that's not the cleanest way so we are going to do it a bit more cleaner the first thing that we are going to do, put ctrl t and add a new audio channel and once you have done this you use this one to listen the first channel so this channel will be rooted back here and we are going to go for post effects so right after this one it goes into this one not before the mixer and you're going to put it into in mode so if i saw this now i will hear the kick right even though i have nothing here why is this important this means that we can now experiment quite a bit with different effects like the verbs and delays and so on really handy so what i'm going to do put a simple delay but i'm going to just pick something like this and put it here so i can hear that the sound and then on top of that i'm going to go for a reverb you can in between use also something like this right put an amp and really distort it but I feel like, especially last year, in 2020, it, get, it got more and more popular to make clean rumbles. So that you clearly hear where the those percussive uh, sound in the rumble itself. So that's the reason I'm going to go for something like this. There is still this, this reverb mushiness in it, but you can clearly hear that delay there as well. So what I'm going to do, cut a little bit more. Something like this. But before resampling, I think I'm going to increase this one a bit more, so to mush it a bit more. And maybe we can add super slight amp. Not bad. And once we have done this, we are going to add another channel. In this channel, we are going to go for resampling, so that we can solo this and solo this one and we can record what we have done this here. This will give us the opportunity to, to come back and change the things if we want to. So if we are not happy with the resample and we want to do it again one more time, that will really help. So we're gonna just click this one and it will resample back. Let's save it. And we have this guy now. So the first thing that you realize that you have like a continuous rumble here, like this area. And then you have this kick area more thumb more like boom mm, sound so what i like to do is just take pieces out here and there and try to come up with something a bit unusual than regular more like a robotic sound if you do it like it like it will always like da -da 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 right but if you do this way for example if i say i want to take this part move this a bit around maybe right and then i take this part maybe move it around and maybe i use this a bit more so if that i'm trying to do like if we saw this part together with the kick 
you, you can hear what is happening like here maybe we can move a bit more i want like maybe dum the dum the dum, dum kind of stuff right very popular lately and maybe you can move it a bit more so do you see why i prefer to resample it that means that i have ultimate control over how everything will sound so i like this guy maybe here maybe i take this and maybe i take this part here move it here and we can put on top of each other and then maybe something like maybe you want to have it a bit more like this maybe Maybe we can delay it a bit more. So you just need to experiment a little bit. Let me experiment for this one to come up with some type of nice groove. Let's do that. After a little bit of experimentation, putting things here and there, I get this guy. You see that there are a lot of chops here and there. Try to make it really groovy. And it sounds like this. Be aware that I also increased the BPM to 127. Having a main room taking track and 120 doesn't make sense. So it's also important. It almost like it lags a little bit and it really gives this kind of tension to the track. Once you have got this, you see that it's still it's kind of really clean. What I like to do oftentimes is just put start with EQ8, right? Cut super lows, usual stuff. And then here you can actually apply a reverb to make everything a bit like a, it means that you, when you have reverb there will be a slight fail here because the reverb will continue up and then it will sound up down again it will smooth up the things a bit more but you're not going to use it 100 percent like slight to something like this a bit maybe longer tail we can solve this so that you can hear a bit more and then we're going to go for an eq and here, the similar thing over here, we're going to go mid-side, go to sides immediately. We don't want really lows to be uh, stereo. Just go here and cut them off. You can even do it more aggressively. Maybe boost a bit. And to compensate that, you can go back to this mid here, then boost a bit maybe here, and the second one could be cut, and we can cut something like this. And then finally, I feel like it's a bit like uh, muddy here, so I'm going to decrease the Q. Then I should do this one kick so that I can hear how the kick together with sounds. Really cool. And the final touch, because now we have all these tails, of course, we're going to put a compression, side in the kick, so that we have this nice going up type of group groove. So go here, side chain to kick, bam. And we're going to go for the look ahead so that we start ducking before the kick hits. Beautiful. Again, the reason I like to do it this way, I have ultimate control on how everything sounds and I can build really weird uh, grooves on top of that and once we have done this what I like to do is take a piece from the kick so I'm going to pick it like this right and I'm going to just cut the kick off here put it here the reason that I often like to do from the kick is because the kick if we make another percussive sound from the kick everything sounds a bit more coherent because we are using the single source for everything so what I like to do oftentimes take that initial part off if I solo this Right? Something like this. And then you can actually put an EQ8, cut super lows. Something like this. So you want it in the kind of low mid area, but you don't want it subby. So what I like to use is just to emphasize the groove that we are having. So I'm gonna, I can move it around like dum -ta -dum -ta -ta kind of stuff. Maybe around here, like that, right? The kind of stuff. Of course, the placement are off. Let me let me do it quickly and come back. So a little bit arrangement here and there, and I also cut a bit high, so I don't want it super bright. Sounds like this. <laughs> really cool. <laughs> Thank you.
at least for my ear. Again, this is completely up to you and it gives you a lot of creative space to come and play around. And once this is done, I also like to add now everything is done with the kick. Now we need something more colorful, something sounds a bit different. And I'm going to go and pick something from my sample pack. I found this sound uh, and I tune it down quite a bit, like 13 dB, so make it dark. Without it, it sounds like this. Kind of rub sound, right? And when you put it 13 down, it sounds like this. Kind of somebody's voicing over and I add a bit overdrive and side tune the kick. Same idea. Together. And I also like to add something in the background, like a noise layer. It could be like it's ambient noise. It can be anything, like it's a it could be a sound of rain, it could be like your fan of your computer. Doesn't really matter. It just fills up the ambient a bit more. So let's put that as well. I have this fan rain sound from my sample bag. We're gonna side chain it to kick. And all together, like look how it kind of glues everything. Now the same idea here, let me put the rest of the elements just on top of that so, so you can hear again how it sounds when everything is in place. What I add basically these hi-hats sounds and together with the lead. And once we add the rest of the elements here that we have, sounds like this. Yeah, this a lot of driving big room feel in it. If you are enjoying the video up to now, if you feel like it is adding something to you, please like the video and subscribe to the channel now because it really helps me and keeps me motivated to make more videos like this. But other than that, now we're gonna jump to the last sound. We will jump from this mean room driving techno sound into the more mainstream progressive ass sound. this type of tracks I feel like you have to really find some preset that inspires you and in this case I have this preset with me and sounds like this it's a quite really common sound in progressive houses like square wave driven a bit like uh, FM inside it. it looks like this and on the FM side we have a bit distortion a bit hyper dimension and compression and so on and once you have this you should probably play with the kick or anything that you have in the track and try to come up with something catchy. In this case, I'm going to use a song that is already made so that I don't need to spend too much time. But let me play it for you so that you hear what we are about to do. So with a little bit tinkering, a little bit playing around, looks like this. So the idea here is though, this one will be your body, like we did before. The first thing that you immediately will realize is this is actually a stereo sound. So we, if we go to hyper dimension, we have this, you see that we have this dimension activated. Making it a bit stereo. And on top of that, we are sending slightly reverb. But again, this is the body of your song, not really super sub. So let's add the sub on top of this. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to copy the same notes, but I'm going to take off these C sharp twos because it's too high. We actually don't need them for the sub. Like just clean them up like this is fine. Uh, we want the sub to be in a certain range. And if you are going too up, then you are like climbing too much. The other thing that you can do if you want to like keep it a bit less, you can put it one octave down so that you, it's more in the line. But you see that it comes on top of each other. So it's really kind of overkill. So I'm gonna just click on zero so that we take it off. Now we have it more smoother subline. And I'm gonna go for the serum. What I like to do, put maybe something like this, put it into zero so that we have so, two soft tooths. Uh, you don't even need to be using soft tooths really. The only thing that you should do, have something maybe slightly have harmonics in it so that when you filter out, it already will turn kind of a so, uh, sine wave. And actually, send both them into the filter and if we played it together. 
The only thing here is that we should put it into mono so that the two nodes doesn't play on top of each other. And I'm going to make the envelope shorter. So it's also get a bit plucky. Not as plucky as the bud layer, but still slight high sound right there. And I like to put a slight um, tube distortion on my subs. It just warms them up a little bit and smooths them up. And afterwards, same idea here. We're going to put an EQ8, cut really heavy. And here. And afterwards, I'm going to compress it quite a bit because I want this one really stable, really on the behind. And the easiest way to do it, like you go for aggressive ratio, something like three to five, something around there. So that the sound level is a bit more smoothing out. And again, one more compression and side chain to the kick. And of course, look ahead so that we start ducking before the kick hits. Together with the other guy now. But this is not, not enough. Now we need kind of a color layer on top of that to make the sound even more interesting, more different. And it's always about layers because you cannot give all these different things with a single host layer. And what I'm going to do, going to pick another serum. We will start with duplicating just the body layer so we have exactly the same node and open up the serum. I don't want to use a lot of oscillators because we will still have a lot of layers, so I don't want to really mash things. So whenever I use a layer, I have a purpose. You shouldn't really put the layers just to put them without really thinking about it. So in this case, I want to go for a bit more like a square wave style stuff. So maybe something like this would work, I would say. Something like this, right? And I'm going to go for the filter and then going to make a very plucky envelope. And if you take a listen to this. And we can put it into mono, put a bit of release. And I'm going to put it one octave up. Really, really cool, right? That's like a really nice square wave sound. Let's distort it a bit. Chorus a bit. Maybe the last slide compression. Now you can go really crazy with this one. You can do many different things. You can, for example, use also LFO to pan it around. Maybe put it into really some random shapes. If you want to go super crazy, it doesn't really matter that much. And do something maybe like this. I have no idea. Doesn't I don't care that much. Once you have done this, I'm going to go for EQ8, of course, and I'm going to go for... I'm just interested in this part. And together with the other guys, let's listen one more time. The other thing that you can do, get kind of a, like a kick trance in to make it really sharp. So in this case, if you open this up and turn this off and go for noises here, here in the serum attacks kick, you, there is a lot of kick attacks really. I know you can do this. And together one more time. The one thing that you can always do is like group them up now and put size slew glue compression just to Catch the transient. And if you are lazy, actually we should have put this one onto the on top of each other, but I'm too lazy. I'm gonna put a kick side chain. You can even saturate them slightly all together, right? Right before glue compression. Let's listen to this one more time together with the kick.
If you think that we have done with the layers, you are wrong. These type of tracks always about adding even more layers and making it even more interesting because this is wireless bass is also the melody. So you have to support this with your lead sound or plug sound or whatever. So in this case, in this track, it was supported by additional plugs, high layers to make the sound and the melody mush into each other. It's like a one single element rather than one single bass. So let me add this time too quickly as well to show you around what I mean. So I added three more plug layers. The first one sounds like this. Super attacky transient sound. Really from the same patch but adding a little bit fast envelope and then other plug body. Similar sounds but this one is seven seven tones and on top of that one this more organ sound. And all together, it sounds now like this. There is really no clear beginning and end of the sound. It's like a bass sound, but it's also the plug melody. So it's really this smooth transition. But be really careful with this one. You cannot do this to every sound. So if you do this to on your bass and plugs, then you cannot have another big lead sound. Otherwise, it will be two minute sounds crushing each other and it won't work. Using things like a small arpeggios or the pianos like this track did is fine because it's a completely different time of tamra. If I put everything together now and let you listen one more time, you can understand a bit better what I mean. So I just added the other elements and all together it sounds like this now. And that was it for the video. I really hope to show you different genres so that you can get really some ideas because I feel like there are a lot of different things that you can learn from the neighboring genres. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. And I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye.